these last number of weeks, I don't know about you, but I've spent a lot of time feeling uh, ignorant, incompetent, wondering what to do and not knowing. I don't think I'm alone in that. I think we've been living in this time uh, with, that's so unprecedented, we really don't know what to do because we've never done this before. Uh, clergy all across the country are learning new skills like video editing and Zoom conferencing and all these kinds of things that we never thought were part of our core competencies, and now they have to be. Uh, it's, an, it's an unsettling experience to feel like the basic things of life, of one's life, we don't know how to do. Uh, even apart from church, people are learning again how to use a kitchen, how to uh, bake or cook or clean or something like that. And, uh, and it can feel, again, unsettling to have to be doing things that we don't necessarily think uh, we're good at. And I have to tell you, in the middle of that kind of experience, I haven't found the story of the Good Shepherd particularly comforting. And I'll tell you why specifically. And that is because very often when we talk about the story, we talk about sheep. And we're reminded that sheep aren't very smart. And the last thing I feel like I need to be reminded of in this time when I don't know how to do anything is that I'm not very smart. Thank you very much. I already know in spades, right, that I don't know how to do what I'm supposed to do. And so when this Good Shepherd story is framed as, you don't know what to do, but Jesus does, it's a, frankly not very helpful. <laughs> Even if it's true, and it probably is in some ways. But there's more to this story than that. So let me, you may remember about six weeks ago, I can't remember, it was that long ago, do you remember we talked about the man born blind? It was six weeks ago. We had the story of the man born blind in John's Gospel. And if you remember the story, this man, because he had been born blind, uh, was sort of an out, uh, on the fringe of society. No one felt any responsibility to take care of him because in their mind, if he was born blind, it was because of some sin. It was because something had gone wrong. And so, so they didn't feel any obligation to take care of him. And then when his sight was restored, they were so upset about that because they, again, kind of like in this time, it was an unprecedented, unexpected moment. They didn't know what to do. And so they went to their worst behavior and they cast him out of the synagogue. They made him even more of an outcast when this good thing happened to him. And it's right on the heels of that story that Jesus tells us about the good shepherd. It's right on the heels of that story of the man born blind that Jesus says, truly I tell you, I am the good shepherd. And he goes on with the passage we have today. So he actually, he actually tells us the story uh, in a moment when, when, it, when people weren't being ignorant, they were being very badly behaved. They were just treating other, this man born blind and others very poorly for their, own, um, for their own gain or their own self-defense, basically. That's the context in which Jesus tells the story. And Jesus doesn't tell it, therefore, to be sweet or to be cute. He tells it powerfully to say that God has something more in store. This is the other thing I struggle with with this story is, having grown up in the church, Mother Margaret, you may have a different experience of this story, but having grown up with this, I can't tell you how many times I colored uh, a young, very white-skinned male shepherd with a sheep over his shoulders. Right, Father Burl, did you do that? Like every year, every month in Sunday school or somewhere? These cute, irenic scenes that sort of, that, that are sort of this they served this not helpful purpose when, when we're anxious to say, oh, you don't need to be anxious, just calm down. That doesn't help. <laughs> and so, so again, that's not what this story is. This story is one of strength. Shepherds were not necessarily the most highly revered in society, but they were strong, confident, courageous people. When Jesus says he's the good shepherd, he's asserting his strength. His steadfastness in caring for each of us. That's what's going on with this, with this idea of a good shepherd. It's not to tell you and me that we're stupid or incompetent. And it's not to tell us, oh, just calm down, it'll all be okay in some platitudinous way. It's Jesus telling us that when things are unexpected and unknown and uncomfortable, 
that he is there to guide us and show us the way. And we actually know what that way is. It's simple to know, even if it's not simple to live out. And there are several ways we can frame it. Jesus' summary of the law, for example, where he says, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. There's one very simple way to describe that way of Jesus that he as a shepherd will guide us into. Um, Our baptismal covenant is another one that's great. You remember that one? Uh, Continuing in the apostles' teaching and fellowship. Resisting, persevering and resisting evil. Uh, Proclaiming by word and example the good news of God and Christ. Seeking and serving Christ in all persons. Striving for justice and peace. The fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, one of my favorite. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithful, faithfulness, generosity, and self-control. There are other ways we can frame that way of God, the ways that we're called to live, and we know what they are. The challenge is always to live it out. We know that. But let's remember today the, 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 the powerful truth of this story. I want this, this image of the Good Shepherd today not to be one of beating ourselves up because we don't know what to do, because there's enough of that going on. I want this today not to be a story of just um, bland reassurance that it will all be okay. Even though that's true, it's not always helpful. I want this today to be a strong reminder of who Jesus is and who we are as his followers. That even when there are those moments when we don't know the way, we don't beat ourselves up because we don't know. We, we, we can be sheep-like in some ways, being open and trusting that our good shepherd has things well in hand and actually does give us guidance to live even in those times we don't know or understand. So today, however it is that you want to frame that way of God, that way of love, that way that Jesus um, shows us, today remember that he is a strong guide and protector and that we are faithful followers who can who can take on that courage and that strength of jesus because jesus our good shepherd shows us the way